I'm Brooke and this is my tiny home, Lady Bird, and I am living in the tiny home community of Lux Tinny in the White Mountains of Arizona. So I've been living in this tiny home for almost four months, just moved in recently in, at the beginning of winter. The builder is Steve, he owns the community as well and he builds tiny homes and the dimensions are 11 foot by 34 foot. So the monthly cost for renting this lot space is $4.59 and that includes the city water, sewer, and trash. My home is part of the phase three expansion of the community and so I have about three or four other neighbors that will be moving on to the street. Part of the expansion, um, there's still construction going on as the new homes are getting built. And then there's other plans for future amenities such as a community space and a little garden space. And on the outside of the home on that side is a little storage shed so I can just put things like suitcases and things like that. Also, the lot's quite large. I actually had a second set of utilities set up because I plan to build a smaller like casita type place to be a guest home or um, like an Airbnb spot. Well, that's it for the outside. Uh, let me show you the inside. Come on in. Welcome into my tiny home. It is about 399 square feet on the bottom floor. I also have a top floor loft bedroom area that's about 64 square feet. With the home, I just really wanted like a cozy kind of cabin atmosphere. So I have natural wood on the walls and the ceilings. Also, I, I really wanted a open spacious kind of feeling. And so the ceilings go up to about 12 feet. When I was helping to design the space, I really had my cats in mind. I wanted it to be a really cat-friendly space. And so basically any surface that they can get onto, they do. So they have their food and water over here on the counter. Um, if I have guests over or preparing food or anything like that, I just move it down. Clean the counters, obviously, when I prepare food. And then I have one cat right here. This is Molly. And my other cat is Buster. Buster's a little more camera shy, but but Molly's really into getting the attention. I really wanted the kitchen space to just feel nice and open. I also really wanted a lot of storage space, cabinet space, since I don't have like a pantry per se, but I have full size appliances. So I have a fridge, um, it dispenses water and ice. I also have, this is a blind base cabinet down here. So it goes all the way to the back here. So I kind of store things that are just lighter, like napkins and things further back in there and then other Tupperware and things like that. Lots of cabinet space to have space for food, baking and cooking supplies, I have a full size dishwasher, nice large sink. The window is really nice there. I wanted to have a window looking out just kind of letting light in and just to look out while doing di dishes and things. I really have more space than I need at the moment, but I like it because I can kind of grow into it if I end up buying more kitchen devices or things like that. Lazy Susan down here, I kind of just keep the cat food and treats and stuff down here. Full size electric oven and stovetop, microwave. I do have a nice pull out trash can and just spot, extra little spot for little bags. The kitchen overall works great for me. Um, I really have no um, complaints about it whatsoever. Initially I had wanted to do like an island in my original kind of thought process, but we ended up turning it into a peninsula here. So there's not like an island sort of blocking everything in. It's just a nice peninsula that flows into the rest of the kitchen. So I'm really happy with it. We kind of realized when we were gonna put the island in that it would just wouldn't feel as roomy. The other reason I did that too was because I wanted to have a, sp a spot for like my printer and laptop. So I have on this side of the peninsula, a space with cabinets here. There's an outlet built into the cabinet down there so I can keep the printer on, charge my laptop, that kind of thing. So I really like that feature a lot. 
for me the must-haves kind of throughout the rest of the house too we're just having full-size appliances you know I'm really a city girl so I I'm used to those amenities and I was already making quite a big move and so I just wanted to have some sense of what I was used to already and since I had the space to do it I just went with the full size. So we came in through the front door. I actually have a second door on the other side of the home and this leads to a little catio. So a nice space for the cats to come out, hang out when it's not too windy or snowy. And eventually I'd like to build maybe like a cat tree or something that's weather resistant for them. They can kind of hop around over here, but um, they love it. She comes out <laughs> right away just to check things out. And then you can kind of just see the rest of my lot behind me. So it's a very big lot. I'm looking forward to trying my hand at some gardening. And again, that would be where the little casita would be eventually. It's just a nice spot to kind of come out and hang out with the cats. Stepping back inside, I have some coat hangers. I can hang my purses up here as well. And then I have just a nice little area for my shoes. I have a little area for my books over here as well. All right, and then stepping into the living area, we can say hi to Buster over here. He's a little bit shy. And while we're here, um, this is a little custom litter area for the cats. If you open it up in here, I'm kind of working on some little curtains for them. And then their litter box is in there. Further inside is just some scratchers and things. And I just put up some fun lights in there just to make it a nice little space. This was my idea. And so I asked Steve to incorporate this into the staircase area. I thought that'd be a good use of space. All right, and then I have my couch here. And so I needed pretty specific dimensions just because it's a bit more narrow of a space. And so I got this couch at Ikea and I wanted the ability to have guests over. And so I got this model that where it can actually pull out. There's also some storage underneath this side of the couch. So I use it for, right now I'm using it for just like extra blankets and shoes and that, those kind of things. Cats love the couch. It's super nice in the afternoons. The sun is going down on this side of the house, so we're getting in some nice sun from outside, nice and warm. And I did want a couch too that I could just kind of spread out, lounge out on, just be really comfortable in. So this has been working out great. Just for the rest of the living area, there's just a nice little uh, TV monitor here. And um, I found this online and I just had to have it for the cats, just like a fun little thing for them. And then since this pulls out into like a bed, I didn't get a table, coffee table. So I just got this little cute kind of like couch koozie thing. Um, that way I don't spill drinks or, and I can just have snacks or whatever. <laughs> I'm Brooke. I am 36 years old. I am a nurse by trade and right now I'm just taking a little bit of a break from direct patient care so I've been doing some online work and I'm also in online school to get my master's in nursing education. Just like for so many other people the pandemic had a big effect on me. A lot of significant things happened. One of which was I got divorced and we sold the house and so it kind of put me in a position where I could sort of think about how do I want my life to look at this point going forward. I was sort of ready just to make a change and get out of the city and just kind of a change of scenery. And so I started looking seriously into tiny living. I'd always been kind of curious about it, fascinated with tiny living, different ways of living that people had like RVs, yurts, tiny homes. But at this point in my life, I sort of started looking at tiny living seriously. I found this community online and I've, I visited a few times some of the Airbnbs up here. I think staying in a few of them helped me to really get an idea of what I liked about the tiny homes, what maybe wouldn't work for me so much, what would work for me so much. And when it was announced on Facebook that a new expansion would be happening to the community, then I sort of jumped on it and started communicating with the owner and that's where it all got started. Do you sit behind a computer all day? Me too. 
Ugh. It could really be torture if you don't have the right chair. If you're looking for a state-of-the-art, super comfy chair, look no further than the Sihu Doro S300 Ergonomic Office Chair. It's so comfy, sometimes I don't even want to get out of it. Christian, work's over. Come on. The effortless, smooth, and weightless reclining experience is what makes the Doro S300 so incredible, achieved with an industry-leading mechanism of aerospace-grade materials. Other ergonomic chairs use conventional spring materials that increase tension and pressure that could lead to serious leg discomfort. Smoothly recline the Doro S300 and stop at any angle with no locking needed. The seat cushion and armrests automatically adjust too. Feels like magic. The cherry on top is the dual dynamic lumbar support. It's easily fine tunable, so you can find the perfect fit for your body type. Sihu Doro S300 Ergonomic Office Chair is defying gravity, redefining comfort. Save 10% off by clicking the link in the description. On a tight budget, consider the Doro S100. So we'll move to our washer and dryer. Of course, we have a little cat pillow for them because they like to take naps on the dryer. Just have a little nook for extra towels, little projects for around the house, little tools and things. I wasn't too concerned about trying to like hide the laundry area since I use it on a pretty much daily basis. So it's just part of the house, part of my daily life, and I just really like it. So I could have done maybe like a washer dryer combo and that was one of my ideas. I ended up just going with the two separate ones since it's the it kind of just fits under the upstairs area. It just tucks right in there perfectly. And that's kind of what I'm used to as well is just having separate washer and dryer. So yeah, I just ended up deciding to go with that. So walking into the bathroom, I have a nice full size uh, shower tub combo. And actually my stepdad did all the tile work in here and so it looks really beautiful, really nice. We kind of redesigned the bathroom like a few different times and so originally I was just going to get a just a basic like fiberglass shower tub combo. Because there's a window there the fiberglass wouldn't work and so we just went the, the tile route. For the vanity, it's I think it's a 36 inch wide and so it has plenty of room for me to store things. There is just lots of space for me. I don't need too much anyway. So on this side of the bathroom is the toilet and then I'll just move the door here. And then also just a little area um, has the water heater. And I also store like my vacuum and broom, um, extra coats, purses. I can hang extra towels, jewelry, purses, that kind of thing. The layout works really well. It doesn't feel too cramped or crowded at all. I can move around in it easily. I decided even not to put a door on this little nook area just because it'd be two doors kind of working with them. So it just works perfectly. All right, so that is the downstairs. So now let's go check out the upstairs. So this is my upstairs area. So we created a hallway that at least I can stand. I'm about 5'9", and so I can stand in the hallway without bumping my head. So that's nice. And then I have just a nice little closet here where I just have plenty of room for my clothes to hang. I have some extra clothes down here and then into my bedroom here. It's a queen size bed that fits in here. So I have room all the way around the bed. I have some more storage space under here. There's also a pull-out drawer under the bed on that side. I kind of use that for lesser used things like extra sheets. It's a, just a really nice cozy space. I can sit up just fine, no issues. Nice big window, which is great. Just it doesn't make it feel small and claustrophobic. One feature I had added was a little barn door. One reason why I added the barn door was so I, my idea is to have guests stay up in this room and they can close the barn door for privacy, hopefully not get bothered by the cats. But it's just nice too for a little extra privacy for myself if I need it. So the tiny home cost about 141 total and that doesn't include the appliances or furniture, decor. 
I did take out a small personal loan just to kind of cover those things. But what's nice is that I've sort of looked at all of my monthly bills now, even with the loan and everything, it's still lower than my monthly rent was in Phoenix. So a big difference there. It's been a little bit of an adjustment moving from a, a big city at about a thousand feet above sea level to a small town, almost 7,000 feet elevation. But it's beautiful up here. I, I love it. I love the, the clean air, the clouds, the sun, even though it gets cold, obviously in the winter and snows, the sun comes out almost every day. So it just has still that kind of, that piece of Arizona with with that where it's just nice sunny days. Um, where I live, it's convenient. I'm not really rural. Um, I can just pop on down to the store. There's a few lakes within a couple minutes drive that you can walk around. And so, so yeah, I really love it up here. I really enjoy living in this community. It is, I think, a big part of it is that we're all kind of have maybe similar mindsets, even though we're all here for pro probably different reasons. I've met with some of the neighbors already. We've exchanged numbers. You know, they've offered to help me out with anything. And it just, it feels uh, safe. It's pretty quiet. What I really enjoy about tiny house living, it feels like I can sort of just decompress, slow down a little bit more in my day to day. It feels just nice and cozy, and since I really helped with design ideas, it feels like it is like my home, which is important, I think, to feeling super comfortable and happy in your home. When I was thinking about the layout of the home, I really took into account the cats, and because I wanted it to be a space that they loved as well and felt comfortable in. Um, it was a big move for them as well. They've adjusted really well, but I definitely thought a lot about the things that they would like about the house, and I actually have plans to make it even more cat-friendly for them. Kind of like it's our house, or you could say it's their house, and I just fund their lifestyle, but... <laughs> Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.